I was in a plane crash. It was a small wooden experimental plane. I crashed into tree trunks at the edge of a lake. They told my wife it would be touch and go for the next week. Multiple serious and long operations were needed. There was a high risk of failure involved. They put me into a week-long coma. I woke up in a strange place I later learned was the in-between. It was like a middle ground between two worlds. Here's what happened. I found myself on the rooftop of an old building, feeling really sick and in pain. When I looked up, I saw a city that looked like it was stuck in between heaven and hell. The buildings were all gray and gloomy, and there were dark clouds hanging over them. It was so quiet in this creepy world, like there was no sound at all. As I knelt there, I noticed something interesting to my left. It was a huge egg-shaped structure made of metal, with lots of gears inside. It was like a giant clockwork machine. Suddenly I felt even sicker. I said out loud that I couldn't handle this anymore. And then, something amazing happened. The gears inside the egg started moving, making a whirring sound. They were like the gears you see in a clock, but they moved in all different directions. I got closer to the egg and watched the gears carefully. They were passing through each other, which was impossible. It was like they were dancing in a way that I couldn't even understand. Finally, they stopped moving, and I reached out to touch the egg. In my mind, I heard a voice talking to me. It said that the egg was something called the future birthing into the now. I didn't really understand what that meant, but it was intriguing. I looked at the gears again, and some of them looked solid while others didn't. It's as if they were from a different dimension. It was all so fascinating. And then, I reached my hand through a gap in the egg. It was like I was part of the process of something important happening. I reach out and touch one of the gears, the one that looks the sturdiest. Suddenly, I see a bunch of images in my head, like a video of things that haven't happened yet. But then I feel this intense pain, and I can't help but double over. Without thinking, I yank the gear out and throw it away. The machine starts spinning its gears again, trying to adjust to the missing one, making a soft clicking sound. I'm so confused, so I ask, What's going on now? I don't see a body, but a voice answers me. Each gear represents a possible thought, word, or action in your future. By removing that gear, you're changing your destiny. I say, how did I even know I could do that? Take out a gear and change my future? The voice replies, that's why you're here, to make these choices. I think for a moment and say, I have no clue. I don't even know where I am. The voice explains, you're in the in-between, a place that's neither the past nor the future. I'm still confused, so I ask, in between what? The voice answers, everything. It's like a moment that lasts forever. I don't get it, so I tell the voice that it doesn't make sense to me. The voice says, it's impossible to understand in such a short time, but here you are, experiencing eternity in a single moment. Do you remember who you are in the real world? I try really hard to remember, but I can't. I have no idea. The voice says, that's because the past doesn't matter anymore. I say, okay, but why do some of these gears make me feel sick and not others? The voice explains, every choice has consequences, some good and some bad. The pain you feel is a sign. I want to know more, so I ask, where are the gears that make me feel good? The voice tells me, that's not why you're here. Feeling good isn't the point. I see more gears coming into view, some of them passing through others. Some gears are clear and easy to understand, while others are blurry and hard to focus on, but all of them bring meaning with them. Every time a gear stops, I take out a gear that I think will cause me pain in the future. A new gear appears, and on it, I see a Ferris wheel with happy grandchildren riding it. They hold onto their seats tightly, laughing and smiling. They look at me, but it feels like they're looking past me, lost in their own world. I decide to let that gear pass by. I look at the pile of gears that is growing. I ask, it seems like if I don't have a bad future, then I won't have a future at all. Even though I feel less pain now, will I die sooner because of all this? The voice responds, your destiny has to fit around futures that aren't meant to be. The number of breaths you take is already decided. I will worry about your last breath. I say, I don't know if that's comforting. The voice says, getting rid of bad choices doesn't mean you won't make wrong ones. You won't know they're wrong until after they happen. Right and wrong are things you can't control. So worrying about what will happen tomorrow is pointless. It's better to understand how everything fits together. I ask, so what am I missing? What don't I understand? The voice answers, what is right in front of you? Grace. Nobody deserves heaven, it can only be given by grace. It's your birthright, but you have to choose it over the world that separates us. 
Fixing my future seems really tough. It's kind of embarrassing that I don't have any morals guiding me. Just pain. I don't even know where or when these future things happen. Then this voice tells me that where isn't as important as what or when. It's better to let go of the things that tie me down than to carry their heavy weight. It's like this place was made for me to do one thing perfectly, without any chance of messing up. The voice says that if people with choices make bad decisions, having fewer choices might actually be a good thing. I see a gear turn to dust as it disappears from sight, going from the present to the past. The voice says I can't change the past, but I can make better choices in the future. Everything is connected, so I should pay attention to my relationships. The voice tells me to be gentle with everyone, just like it's gentle with me. I'm confused and ask how any of this is gentle. The voice says that I asked for something, and being here is the answer. The person who fell from the sky is not the same as the one who flew up into it. I look up at the gray sky and the empty city. Then I look back at the egg and touch it with my hand. I say out loud that I can accept this now. When I wake up in the real world, I find out that I was gone for a whole week. I was busy the whole time in the in-between, pulling out gears to feel better. But time doesn't seem to pass there, and I didn't have a physical body that needed rest, food, or sleep. I think it's interesting that I only speak out loud twice when I'm there, once when I arrive, and once when I leave. The second time I speak up is because it's really hard to watch the machine's gears spinning around and around, trying to figure out what's going to happen next. The whole experience keeps unfolding, and I learn new things every day. But my experience is different from what most people go through when they have a near-death experience. Here are the ways it's different. First, I don't go through a tunnel to get to the other side. I just suddenly appear in this place called the in-between. Second, I don't see any of my loved ones or anyone else there, but I know I'm not alone. Another thing is that I don't have a life review like other people usually talk about. But I think I might have something similar, just in a different way. It makes me wonder why it happens and what its purpose is. I think the gears I see are like the events that will happen in my future, and they're influenced by my past experiences and the pain I've felt. From a spiritual point of view, it's like the consequences of my past actions. But since we can't change the past, I focus on using my past pain to make better choices in the future. That way I can avoid the things that might tempt me, even if they seem attractive at the time. One more thing that's different is the feeling of love. In contrast to this, I compare the in-between to a military boot camp. When you're getting yelled at by your drill instructor, it doesn't feel like love at all. But the purpose of boot camp is to help you survive and get ready for what comes next. It's about building your strength and making smart decisions to ensure your success. That's a different kind of love, not the warm and fuzzy kind. I also can't see any boundaries. It's like they don't even exist for me. When I'm in this weird place between life and death, I can't remember anything about my life or the people in it. If someone asks me if I want to go back or keep going, I have no clue what they're talking about. I'm so lost in this never-ending moment. It's like nothing else matters. I don't get why nothing makes me feel good, not even the things that are supposed to be positive. They just feel normal at best. Maybe feeling normal is what's right, and I'm more focused on getting things set up the right way instead of actually experiencing what's right. It's like building a pool without ever jumping in. I also think that when I was in that weird place, feeling peaceful was the best emotion. Joy or sadness were not as good because they either made me want to avoid something or be attracted to it. Peace is like the starting point for everything else. I didn't have any personal stuff going on there. No ego, no personality, no desires except for the pain to stop. I was just there to get rid of the bad stuff. When I started to regain my consciousness and memory and got moved to a rehab hospital, things got even more confusing. I even wondered if I was dead and the hospital was just something my mind made up to help me accept that I was dead. The first person I talked to about this and about what happened to me was my main nurse and she started crying. So I asked her why she was being so nice to me, and she said it was because she didn't want me to get sick and die. And I replied, what? Why would I die? And she explained that at the hospital, the doctors are super busy and can only spend a little bit of time with each patient, like 15 minutes a day. But for some reason, I had three doctors who would stay with me for over an hour. And even my nurse would stop by to listen to our conversations, which were just normal stuff. She said it was because there was something special about me. It was something they had never seen before. It's like the power I had brought back was making people like me. Or maybe it's love, but it definitely feels like it's a part of my story. This story was shared by Jim B. and happened in 2016.